In this video, I'm going to run you through the process of installing and setting up NPS Media Publishing Software, which is DAO's digital signage solution. To start, please install the latest NPS version provided by your distributor. Once everything is installed, to check that NPS is installed, go to the red NPS icon that is present in the taskbar on the bottom right. A cloud information release system shortcut should have been installed on your desktop. When this is clicked, it will open your default web browser to load NPS or CRRS. If it is not present, please do the following. You'll now need to open your web browser, which could be uh, Chrome, Firefox, Edge, etc. To navigate to the NPS application, you'll now need to add the following URL address. This will now bring up the NPS interface. The default username is system, all in lowercase, and the password is 123456. You'll now be presented with this window where you will set up the IP address for the server as well as the port numbers. In this case, 192.168.5.159 will be presented with this number. Make sure you save this somewhere so you can connect your monitors to the system later. We now need to wait 30 seconds for the application to restart. After this has been reloaded, we need to log in with the same username and password as before. We now need to set the new password. Add your preferred password here, then click next. For the security questions, please set up as applicable here. I'm just inserting ones into the following fields for the purposes of this video. And again, Let's wait for the application to restart, which is around 30 seconds. This is what the user interface looks like when you are logged in. Please make note of the resolution of your digital signage and displays for when you are creating and scheduling content. We need to now put that IP address we saved earlier into our remote devices. Some examples here in our demo room in Maidenhead could include the following, such as our DPB18 AI system, our SIA200, which is our stand-up display screen. As long as it is digital signage, we need the correct IP address to be added to the media player, which we will run through shortly. In order to set up your device, you'll need just a mouse. We are going to set up password as admin123, then confirm and give it a minute. It looks like time and date has already been set up for us, but if you need to do that, go to settings, date and time on the right hand side. So be sure to set up this correctly. Here, I'm just going to select London. We left it to the state to automatically update date and time via the network. So this is always correct. Next, we need to configure the network settings as this connects our network with MPS, which is also known as CRRS, which lives on the network. In this case, we are using Ethernet, but there are many other options that are available. We are going to be putting it on DHCP. You do not need a static IP address in order to connect this. As you can see, this device has been supplied an IP address successfully. So now we can proceed to connect this with our server. You can right click to go back to the main menu. Then to continue, go to network release. Here we enter the IP address of the server that we saved earlier. This will now connect to the server. As you can see, device registration was connected successfully. We can now leave it on this screen and head back to MPS. Now back in MPS via my laptop, we have successfully connected the Android Display Media Player box to our server. To check that it has worked successfully, we can head to Device Management. As you can see here, we have one device listed, which indicates that it is online with various other forms of information, as well as the IP address that is listed. This indicates a successful connection. At the top of the user interface, you can see some of the steps you need to follow to set up and schedule content correctly to your system. Some of the steps that I mentioned at the top, such as step one, device registration has been successfully done from our side. Moving on to step two, for media content, this is where we are going to upload our media content for scheduling. So if we click this 
and head over to the menu on the left hand side. Make sure to click video where you can upload videos. Then go to upload media. Select the content you want to upload, then click open. Make sure there are also no spaces in the file name. This content will upload now to the server. If the content is not appearing, you can try refresh by holding down Ctrl and R at the same time. We can now move on to step three, project management. Here with the licensed version, you can have multiple project templates and an array of other features on offer with the full version. We are then going to go add. This is going to be our project name here. We're going to set up the resolution, which is the HD spec for this monitor at 1920 by 1080. In terms of the group, if you are building with lots of devices, you can set different groups such as reception desk, floor one, floor two, etc. In this interface, we will grab a video component and select the content that we uploaded earlier. If you want your digital signage systems to be silent, please ensure that your video files don't have audio prior to uploading into MPS. You need to drag the content to the desired size into values on the bottom right hand side or click the full screen button on the bottom right. Once that is done you can add a name to this layout. You can then click the save button on the top right hand corner. You'll then go back to your projects folder where you can either release or schedule this project. Here you can see a timeline of the indicated times and dates for when this project and your content will be scheduled. Here you can see I'm just scheduling this in for Thursday and Friday from 6am to 9pm. Make sure you select which group you're scheduling this project and content to on the right hand side. Here I'm selecting the default group which indicates living room. I'm now just going to confirm and click the release button. I'm now going to walk to our digital display to show you the process of what is going to happen to that unit after we have released that project. In the event of MPS or CIRS losing connection, the screens and devices will not be affected and will continue to play the last program release until your connection is restored. Back in MPS, if you go to home, you can see your disk capacity on the bottom right. Here you can see we have one video on the system at the moment. To see what is currently on our screens, you can go to the play plan and then go to general plan. Here is the content we have just released. You can also view the allocated days you have in the system for this project. If you want to delete this project, you can go to the bin icon and just confirm. If you wanted to delete the content from the media library, go to the media content menu on the left hand side and then click the three small dots of the video which will bring up a menu where you can then select delete. Smart tagging is a new innovative feature in the digital signage market where we can launch content based on someone's facial expressions when seen by our cameras. We will be launching another video soon showcasing how this works. As a brief summary, here you can select various features for this content to be scheduled if a person's features indicate a match to these criteria. These could be features like facial features that include smiling, being angry, or gender. It could also work according to a person's age and if they are wearing glasses or have a mask. The system also allows you to build custom layouts as you may have seen earlier without using templates. Go back to project management and add project. So in this scene as mentioned we can add content such as stills or video to create our own scene. I'm going to drop the video asset we uploaded earlier here as a reference. So let's now drag, scale and position this content to the correct location. There are some new components here which can also be utilized with the license version, such as having a live streaming media source. So I'm just going to add that and place it alongside the video we added earlier. We can also add a time component. I'm going to jump back into the media content and add two image files quickly. 
I'm going to add the two files which can be JPEG or PNG file formats. Back now in my scene layout, I'm going to click image to add those images we just uploaded. If you click any of the video components, there's also an animation effect option on the right hand side. You can also add PDF, which will scroll through each of the pages. So for most digital signage systems, the most common way of ensuring silent content is being played on all your displays is to ensure that your video files are exported first without audio. So before you schedule content, what you would need to do is find an online file converter or to find a video file converter. I'm just going to add a file here quickly and use the MP4, MPEG4 format and make sure it is in the correct resolution. I would then turn off the audio prior to export. I would also then save the file name with the name indicating it has no audio so that we select the correct file when uploading to MPS. Again, make sure there are no spaces or brackets or anything that is in the file name that will cause conflicts with MPS. For this device, we need to open the access panel on the back. For ease of access, I'm going to remove the network cable. I'm going to plug in the USB with the firmware upgrade on. So, need to power off the device. We now need to hold a tiny reset button and power on the device at the same time, keeping this button pressed. Which, there we go. You need to hold this button for around 10 to 15 seconds. And the light on the front of the screen will show white. There it is. And that device is now upgrading. So how much storage does MPS CRRS have? Typically around one gig for local storage, and then for network release, this is dependent on your server's storage capacity. Can you run DSS and MPS on the same machine or same network? On the same machine, they won't be able to run at the same time. However, on the same network, this is possible. What file formats does MPS support? JPEG, PNG, BMP, GIF, MPEG4, AVR, MOV, ASF, MKV, WMV, WMA, MP3, WAV, and PDF. And of course the channel, all DAW video products. Do I need to purchase MPS? For future releases, it will be a paid subscription. Where do I get firmware for this device? In terms of worldwide availability, email in to your local DAO approved branch. For then DAO UK and Ireland, you can email support.uk at daotech.com. Please see the recommended specs on screen now.